In this video, we will finish the pre-processing module by running all of the other steps, comparing the input and the output of each command to make sure that it ran successfully. The next step is slice timing correction, which edits the data to make it look as though all of the slices were acquired simultaneously. Similar to what we did with realignment, we will first click on the slice timing button in the SPM GUI. Click on the data field and create two new sessions. Double click on the first session and in the filter column, Type caret r sub dash o eight underscore task dash flanker underscore run dash one. In the frames field, enter one colon one four six and press enter. Select all of the frames that are displayed and click done. Do the same procedure for the run two files for the second session. Now go back to the batch editor window, double click on number of slices and enter a value of 40 and then click OK. The number of slices can be found using the SPM vol command, which is explained in the link below to the ebook. For the TR, enter 2. For the TA, follow the formula provided in the help window and enter the following expression. 2 minus, in parentheses, 2 divided by 40. For most data sets acquired with a Siemens scanner, the slice order will be ascending and interleaved. Enter this expression in the slice order field. In brackets, 1 colon 2 colon 40, space 2 colon 2 colon 40, end brackets. And for the reference slice, enter value of 1, to indicate the first slice that is acquired. Leave the file name prefix as is, which will prepend an A to the files that are generated. When you have finished, press the green Go button. This should only take a few moments. As with the realign data, it is difficult to see any difference with the check reg button, but we will be able to better examine the differences between the input and the output in the other pre-processing steps. Next is co-registration, or aligning the functional data to the anatomical data. Click on co-register, estimate, and re-slice. This will open up a batch editor window with only two fields that need to be filled in, a reference image and a source image. The reference image is the image that will remain stationary. The source image, on the other hand, is moved around until a best fit is found between the reference image and the source image. For most experiments, you'll want to use a representative of the functional data as the reference image and the anatomical data as the source image, since we generally want to make as few changes as possible to the functional data. Double click on the reference image and select the mean sub 08 task flanker run one bold image in the func directory. For the source image, navigate to the anat directory and select the file sub 8 t one wnai Then click the green Go button. This step should only take a few moments. When it finishes, another window will be generated showing the co-registration results with the mean functional image on the left and the anatomical image on the right. Click and drag the crosshairs in either image to see how well the images are aligned. In addition to the outlines of the brains being matched, you should also check to make sure that internal structures, such as the ventricles, are aligned as well. Remember that the intensities will be flipped. Darker areas in the anatomical image, such as the ventricles, will appear brighter in the functional image and vice versa. Now that we have co-registered the images, we are ready to normalize all of our data to a standardized space. Before we can do that, however, we need to segment the anatomical image in order to align the different tissue types when we normalize it. Setting up the segmentation step only requires the realigned anatomical file as input. From the segmentation button, double-click the volumes field and select the file r sub 8 t one w and then set the save bias corrected field from save nothing to save bias corrected. The last step 
is to change the deformation fields to forward. This is at the very bottom of the menu. When you have done all of this, click the green Go button. Once the segmentation has finished, you are now ready to use the information generated by this step for normalization. Select Normalize right, click on the data field in the batch editor, and create a new subject. Select the deformation field that you created in the NAT directory, which should be called y underscore r sub 08 t1w.nii. And for images to write, select all of the realigned and slice time corrected images. You can do this more efficiently by typing caret ar dot asterisk in the filter field and entering 1 colon 146 in the frames field. Once the functional images have been normalized, check the output to make sure there were no errors. From the SPM GUI, click on Check Reg and select one of your functional volumes that has a W prepended to it, indicating that it has been warped or normalized. For the second image, go to the directory SPM12 slash canonical and select any of the T1 images, either average 152T1, average 305T1, or single subject T1. In this case, I'm going to select the file average 152T1. As with co-registration, check to make sure that both the outlines of the brains and the internal structures are well aligned. The last step is smoothing, which averages together signal and cancels out noise. Click on the smooth button and then double click on images to smooth. Select the warped functional images and expand them to include all 146 frames for each run. Leave the other defaults as they are and then click on the green go button. As before, use the check reg button to load a representative volume from the output you just created and view it side by side with a warped functional image that hasn't been smoothed. Make sure that it looks that it has been smoothed by the amount that you specified. Now that we've finished pre-processing the data, we are ready to set up a general linear model and fit it to the data, which we'll cover in the next video.